This is one of the two bevel gears from my Adcock and Shipley 1A milling machine from the vertical head. And in the last video I dismantled all of this and I'm about to reinstall this but I discovered there's a burr around the edge here and I want to sort that out. Welcome back to Workshop Friend. This is part four of working on my Adcock and Shipley milling machine and the second part of the vertical head renovation. Last video I disassembled the head and did some inspection and discovered one or two issues. So before mounting the gear on the faceplate, on the table I measured the back surface um, as compared with the front and discovered that this area here is two thou higher than this, this side. So I hope that uh, when I put this on the lathe that shows up as two thou higher again. If not I'll adjust it to make sure the back is running square. And then what I want to do is just skim this surface here and remove this burr. So first of all I've got it running concentrically and then when I've done that I check this this mating face here and it uh, has a run out of just over one and a half thou um, lining up with the marks that I placed on there from the measurements I got off the inspection table. So on the surface plate I had a total run out of two thou on my face plate now I've got a total run out of one and a half thou or just over now that's close enough I think. So what I'm going to do is just skim this face here, this mating face, that's the face which determines the axial position of the gear. It looks to me there that that's plus one, plus one and a half, and then a, a brief dip down to minus one. So it looks like I'm getting a total run out of around about the same as I had on the surface table. It's a bit difficult to tell because the surface finish is poor. So, but the, the key thing is that uh, the high point is is on the same side as on the inspection table. So, my faceplate is true and this is nicely mounted. I'll just show you the run out as we traverse the face here. Try and get this down to zero. And if I traverse out towards the rim. We come to the burr, there's the burr. So we've got a burr of six thou. And uh, that's all the way around the circumference. So that's displacing the gear from the correct mesh with the other gear. I know that because when I measured this gear, I didn't measure at the burr, I measured on the face here. So we definitely want to remove that burr. Well, that's the, the burr being removed. And we're not getting anywhere near the face yet. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Well the surface finish is definitely a lot better than it was and um, what I'd like to do now is just put this back on the surface table and see how parallel the front and the back of this gear is. It looks to me that when that internal comb was machined it threw off a burr on here. Anyway, that's a nice clean surface now. We'll put this on the table and see how it looks. Well, the first thing I notice is it's flat across the face. Before it wasn't, it was slightly conical. We'll go around the circumference and compare. That's maybe half a thou up, half. coming back down again. Great, well that's back down to zero. So we've done two things there. We've got rid of the burr, we've got this uh, correct dimensionally, but we've also got this 
this rim here parallel with the back face. Okay, I think uh, the work on this is finished. If you had seen my previous video, you will have noticed that I took a number of uh, measurements of the internal components of this vertical head, and from that I produced a detailed general arrangement. Now I realize that drawings are not everybody's cup of tea, and if that's the case and you just want to see the, the uh, machining, then I suggest you zoom forward to this section of the video. For those of you who wish to remain with this part, I'd like to show you uh, the general arrangement and um, it actually took a lot more work to produce that than it did the rest of the video and any machining I've done. However, I learned a number of important things from this general arrangement, in particular uh, the bearing location, um, how the oil chamber works, um, how to ensure that the bevel gears are in correct mesh, and also a potential oil leak. Now here you can see the general arrangement showing external views the front and the rear side showing the circular T-slot and also the top and um, a couple of cross sections. Now the cross section here in red shows the rotating parts of the assembly and blue show those parts of the assemblies which are responsible for providing the preload on the angular contact bearings. And of course a very important part of this assembly is the mesh of the two 90 degree bevel gears and it seems that uh, the spacing for this can be achieved by adjusting the thickness of a spacer at the bottom of the assembly. So just as with ordinary spur gears DP is a measure of tooth size which is the number of teeth divided by the diameter. Now of course if you're using uh, metric gears then uh, module is the measure you use. However, with bevel gears, this DP is measured at the outer circumference. And it means that DP varies with radius. So as you move down the cone, the DP actually goes up. In other words, the tooth size goes down. And if you extend that right to the center, then uh, the DP becomes infinitely large. So I took measurements. I've got uh, 28 teeth. And the outside diameter I measured as 3.492 and that gives a DP of 8.018 at the outer diameter. Now that seems like a strange number but uh, when you um, increase the diameter to the nominal diameter which is three and a half inches you end up with a DP of exactly eight. So when I realized this I've got uh, a measurement here that makes sense. This is basically an 8 DP gear on a three and a half inch diameter. So the tables, um, if you look up tables, you can uh, determine the addendum and the dedendum. So the addendum is the height of the gear above the cone rolling angle. In other words, the, the uh, pitch circle cone of the two gears where they mesh. And the dedendum is the line below that to the root. And uh, I looked those figures up and uh, I got a depth of 0.275, an addendum of 0.125, and a dedendum of 0.150. This was my setup for measuring the tooth depth using two indicators, one to locate on the features and the other to register the total movement. And you can see the top slide there perpendicular to the cone angle. So I was able to pick up a measurement there and then uh, using a little bit of geometry I was able to convert that to a measurement at the rim. And that turned out to be 0.261 inches which uh, is quite close to the theoretical figure. So when the vertical head is in the this orientation the oil comes up to about this level and floods around here and comes up to this face here up to about that level. So uh, the oil is quite low down actually in the in the chamber and when the head is in the or horizontal orientation like that the oil comes sits down here and comes up to about this level and uh, just up to this face here. So that gives you a rough idea of where the oil sits. 
Now the other issue is uh, this oil drain plug. So the oil um, drains through this hole here and it comes out the bottom out here and there is this ring which sits over the top and the the drain plug is effectively here so there is no gasket material between these surfaces this ring can't be fitted with a gasket because it provides accurate location and preload for the bearing so the solution i came up with was to fit an eight millimeter by two millimeter o-ring and you can see there was just enough room for the groove so before I can use my boring head to cut the annular ring for the o-ring I needed to make a drawbar so I've made up this 5 8 UNC drawbar which fits my 40 international taper fittings um, I didn't I don't have enough room from the back of the machine to get the drawbar in without fiddling around so I've left the nut separately so I can assemble it and then fit the nut from the back so I produced a little tool here from a broken end mill. I have taken a little bit of time on the offhand grinder just to just to try and get the geometry right. So it's going to rotate in that direction like that. So for that reason there's plenty of clearance on this side of the tool here. And that's the outside radius. Not so much clearance is needed on the inside because the, the circle falls away in that direction. This is on the center line. There's a little bit of front clearance, uh, practically no top rake. And it's just under 100 thou wide, so it means that uh, I'm probably going to have to index acro across slightly to get the right slot width. It's worth spending a little bit of time on the geometry of little tools like this, otherwise you'll find that you're rubbing somewhere and you just won't get a very good result. I wasn't able to fit my newly made DTI holder into this tight space. So I made up a couple of uh, pointers and uh, that enabled me to line up the hole with the center axis of the machine. So the way I'm uh, getting this uh, to the right radius is putting my marking out gauge uh, right up on the edge of the tool on the inner edge and then rotating the cutter into this horizontal again and then traversing the table eight millimeters so that's five, six, seven, eight. And I can see that that's too small. So I need to open this up slightly. Like all these jobs, the setup takes about 90% of the time and the actual machining is very quick. But uh, easy to make mistakes and I did actually cut this slightly too deep. Here's my 8mm by 2mm o-ring. Yeah, I think that's a nice fit in there. Perhaps could have done with slightly more compression slightly shallower hole but I think that will seal. Thank you for joining me again this is uh, all we have time for this week it may take a little longer than usual to get my next video out because I'm going to be away for a while but uh, in the meantime I might be able to put up a video on a slightly different topic uh, workshop related but not the vertical head anyway I hope you join me next time and uh, as always I welcome comments and uh, feedback which is always very helpful thank you